Hi out there. Why have these flowers with me? You're going to find out just during the next few minutes. Meanwhile, I have to admit that I have a rather rare, strange obsession. It started off more than 40 years ago during my studies of philosophy. And somehow I got into reading everything that has ever been written about happiness. And as a young student, I was extremely disappointed about what I read, because somehow this didn't grasp the magic of these moments when you simply don't ask why anymore, when time seems to stand still. So I founded an institute for applied research on happiness, and worldwide we were asking people what was their quest for happiness about. Why was it so easy for many people to become happy and so extremely difficult or maybe even impossible for others? I learned a lot from that. I continued forever. I taught about happiness at different universities. I wrote six books about that. I got tens of thousands of mails, very personal mails of people uh, writing me about their way, their path to happiness. And as a father of five kids, whom I love dearly. Of course, I watched them developing their personal path to happiness. As somebody who has had more than 10 professions, I watched people all over. I traveled and studied and worked in quite a few countries of the world. And this subject has never lost me somehow and will probably never lose me. And what I can tell you as one of the key findings of that after these 40 years is that if our skin is green or blue or yellow or white or brown or black, if we believe in one God, in several gods or in no God at all, if our sexual orientation, our rituals, our values, our traditions are such or such, all of us, all of us want a little happiness. A little of these fragile, rare moments of feeling one with yourself, with the people around you, with your activities, with your expectations. And you think about that a lot, then you can find out that there are certain universal principles that really would find agreement amongst the 7.5 billion men and women on this beautiful planet Earth if they could listen to the speech. And I tell you 10 of these universal principles. Number one, happiness is a decision. We always love to externalize it and say it's our boss, it's the lack of money, it's the weather, it's the partner or whoever who is sort of guilty for making it uh, impossible for me to be happy. But in the end, it's something that we decide. We are in the, driver's, uh, in the driver's seat when it's about finding our way to happiness. The small moments are the big ones. We all have, we all have big goals, big visions. We want to change the world. We want to make it a better world. That is great and very important. But the texture of happiness is rather one that is made of small, rather unspectacular moments. Moments like when you see the smile of your grandma when you go to see her and drink tea with her and listen to her stories again and again. Or the hand of your daughter sliding into yours and she tells you, Dad, I'm envious about you. And you are asking why, and she says, you have yourself all day long, I only have a few hours per day. <laughs> moments like that, moments in love, family, sports, nature, at the movies, whatever, rather unspectacular moments. There are tons of books out there saying that happiness is now. And it's true, we don't even know if we will be around tomorrow or not. 
So rather, let's really concentrate and focus on now. But as human beings, being different to animals, we stand on two legs. And one being the past, with all our memories, good or bad ones, all the traumas that we have, everything we have experienced, on one hand. On the other hand, the future that we want to shape, we want to leave certain traces, we want to change everything that we just plan to uh, make different. And as human beings, happiness is embedded in both the past and the future, and we need everything to become happy persons. What is the number one killer of, of happiness in this world? I would say envy. Envy relies on many, many wrong premises. And it simply says that the life of somebody else over there is better and happier, happier than mine. It's absolutely not true. I could go into that forever, but I won't here. The much, much better perspective on life than envy is gratitude. Gratitude for the people around you, your parents, your kids, your team, your health, your existence, your profession, or whatever, and trying to make the best of that instead of thinking that somebody else's life is better than yours. We all make many, many mistakes. Many, many mistakes. Let's give credit for at least as many to the people around us. Let's learn to apologize, and let's learn to forgive. Because each human being around us is extremely valuable. And losing that individual, because somehow disappointment or negative surprise sort of slides like a glacier above friendship and love is something that you can't replace anymore. I'm looking for the rose. Yeah. The queen of flowers. I think you all will agree that all of us want to be loved and respected just the way we are. And linked to that is something that at first sight seems to be paradoxical, but it's not. We do the most for our own happiness if we primarily take care of the happiness of others. When you see people who only take care of themselves, I bet that they are less happy than people who take care of their old parents, of the, uh, of the poor around there, the handicapped people, the kids, whoever needs help. I founded an organization, Children for a Better World, 25 years ago, and we saved lives of hundreds of thousands of children and made them strong. I tell you that more than any professional success, this makes me happy and proud helping others. We hear that at each birthday, talking about health, that you stay healthy, please. I think health is very important to happiness. Money is, to a certain degree, many, many other factors. But the wonderful thing about strong human being, beings is the fact that we can be champions of in spite that even if something goes wrong, like big accidents, diseases, losses, or whatever, we can always, if we want, we can find new islands of happiness, surprising ones, and can establish there, and that's a wonderful and optimistic message, of course. And anybody with some experience knows that life has two medals, the happy side, and the unhappy side, the dark side, the disappointments, and the grief, and all that. And we need both. We all know that depth and character and personalities rather come from the negative side, dealing with that. We need both. In order to be able to really experience happiness, we have to go through the negative moments as well. They both belong to each other. And the last of the 10 universal principles of happiness if you ask dying people, what would they have done differently? You always hear answers like, I would have shown more emotions. 
you always hear answers like, um, I would have spent more time with my friends. You never hear, I should have spent more time in the office. And the number one answer of dying people to that question is, I would have rather had a life that is really mine. There's so many people around us, well-being, the parents, professors, uh, the church, media, whatever, that somehow impose on us, giving us, this is the way to live, this is what you should do. We know that each life consists of positive and negative elements, we just talked about that. But particularly dealing with the challenging, with the difficult moments in life, you're so much better if you made the choice for your life. So just be you and your life is going to be a happier one. So these are like the 10 universal principles of happiness. They are like an invisible link of all of us. And the quest for happiness, of course, as well. The path to happiness is as unique to each individual as your eyes and your smile and your language and your humor. I heard that there are 250,000 species of flowers, but talking about the path to happiness, there are more than 7.5 billion paths to happiness in this world. And that is amazing. And we have to learn that. This is so, so, so important to learn that this is so individual and this is a gift of human mankind to itself. It's such a luxury. Whenever I fly somewhere, I love to go from the pilot's cabin back to the bathroom in the end of the plane and just looking at all these different faces of people. It's just so amazing. What a luxury. And then I go back and see what they're reading and what kind of films they're watching and what kind of games they're playing. Again, this amazing variety and diversity. And this is just the best we can have. On one hand, we, are, we have so much in common. I was just talking about that. And we are so different. And this is the dance of life. Dance is always about distance and coming closer and distance and coming closer. And this dance of life, to realize that and really live that, is going to make the world a better one and us wiser. So, instead of building walls, instead of closing borders, instead of judging each other again and again, let's just try to, da to dance this dance of life and to, the, to see the beauty in these flowers as well as in these 7.5 billion identities. Thank you.